Hey, how's it going? And welcome along to episode 6 of Satisfactory with me, Rama, from Rama Time. In the last episode, we built this awesome coal generator plant with 8 coal generators in it, and it's fantabulous. I did make a bit of a boo-boo in that I accidentally made the uh, platform a bit too low and the water extractors didn't fit underneath it anymore. But I managed to get three perfectly in this little gap here and it's all working fine. Not only that, I got my little transport tractors set up. So he goes and he collects coal from over here and he takes it back to our main base area. What a clever little truck. And then off camera, I built exactly the same thing over here, just to the back of the main base. And we have these three extractors that are pumping water up to those eight generators up there. And the coal is being brought through my old solid biofuel system, which is now gone. Because we do not need it anymore, as we now have all this wonderful automated coal, meaning I don't need to mess with the power, at least for a little while anyway. Because right now we are generating 1200 megawatts which is as you can see way more than we need right at this moment however we've got a rather big challenge today we've got a lot to do we've got to build an entire steel processing plant just over there and if you look off in the distance you'll see I started making the road to get the coal from over there but there's still so much work to do so let's stop messing around and get on with it roll the intro Oh, quick first distraction. Before we do begin, I did fix up the original iron plant. I just tidied it up a bit. I added some windows, fixed up all the belt entries, and sorted out those ugly ramps that got you into the building. Now you have proper walkways with doors and stuff. It's just a little bit better. I prefer to look at that than that god-awful mess that we had before. Well, we now have a journey ahead of us. We need to go over there. And as you can see, I started making the road to take us up there. And we started off pretty well. So my first ramp will take us all the way to the top of this first cliff here, which is fine, dandy, and all works wonderfully. There was a nice drop pod at the top here, which I managed to get a hard drive out of. Nice. Oh, but I need to do the slope because we need to come down here. I'm purposefully using the double ramp 8x4 foundations rather than the 8x8. Hello. Oh, now there was something I didn't think of. He slipes through my bridge. Oh, I'm going to have to modify this. Okay. Mm, right. Yep, 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 yep. We need to change that. I can't have that. I can't live with it. Sorry, but no. <laughs> right. I have moved it down a little bit. So now at least the moth should fly over it rather than slightly through it. The other point I was saying was I'm using the 8x4 slopes purely so that at some point I can swap these roads out and put train tracks on them and I don't want them too steep otherwise the train has trouble getting up. And here be where my problem layeth. This slope was not enough to reach the right point up the top there so what I need to do is go up that way first and come back down and try to land the ramp somewhere around here because I can clear these trees and make this so that it's easy to fit two trucks down. While you can't see it because of the fog, our route is over that way and this is the top and just here is our coal. So I need to build a collection center perhaps over here and have it go like that. Or, I use belts to take the coal down there and then have the collection center down there. But I think it doesn't really matter. Wow, that's a bit mental, isn't it? Ha <laughs> ha! 
And after careful consideration, I decided that a road that a truck goes down is the most fun thing to do. So that's what I'm going to do. But next I need to get power up here. Hmm. That's quite easy actually, I just run some poles. This is a really long way down. Oh, let's see if it worked. Oh, look at that, it just <laughs> flies over it. Wow. It does mean that if a truck passes exactly at the same time as that, then they will collide. But I don't think they do actually collide, I think it just kind of hits it and or just travels through it. Anyway, so I'm just currently running the power up, so I like to try and be as neat as possible with this. This is going to take me a little while because I've got to run up these blooming slopes. Good, good, good. Oh, look, there's a slug up there. Hmm. I might take the power up high up there as well because I always prefer to take power high so it's not in the way of like the trucks and stuff. But we can use my little trick here to get up here. That'll do. There we go. So we'll pop that one there. I wonder if I could make that jump. What do we reckon? Should we try and do it? Let's do it. Oh! <laughs> was well close but we've got ourselves a lovely green sluggo excellent excellent and I'm going to plop you down there should be out of the way all right up we go again this one's a really long way Well, we have our power up here now, at least. Now we just need to get this all set up. Well, there we go. It's very similar to the other side. It's a very simple coal collection stop. The coal comes out of the miner, goes into the transport stop. Some goes into the fuel so that it can power the truck. And that's it, really. The truck will come up here, come and turn around. I've added some fences. They're safety fences in the hope that the trucks don't just drive off the edge. But there's enough room here. We should be able to do a fairly good turning circle. Unfortunately, you can't see because of all the fog, but yeah, that's a really big drop there. It goes down a very long way. <laughs> but anyway, this is working nicely. One slight issue is because this is only a normal node with a Mark 1 miner on it, I'm only getting 60 per second, which is not very good. So I'm going to at least put one power shard on there. Actually, no, I'm going to put two power shards on there and get that up to 120 parts per minute so that at least the belt is completely full. That'll start filling up nicely, and then we'll get our truck set up. But once again, I need to go and set up the other end down by what will be our steel plant. My next thing to do here is figure out where the trucks should actually drop this coal it's collecting off because of the fact that the actual main base is going to be here. So I'm wondering if perhaps we'll do it so that it comes off this way and goes over there. So let's have a little play. And that is the foundations for the new steel factory, which will have a little drop off depot at the back here. I'll actually open this up a bit more over here. Truck comes down, turns here. Yeah, let's go bump, bump, bump. And I'm going to pop my truck station. I can't afford it. but well, I'm going to put it there. See? Well, that's where I'm going to put my truck station, but it's kind of hard to see here. I want this little area at the back to be kind of where it's... Ugh. Oh dear, <laughs> I fell down a hole. So I'm going to plop it there. Because in theory, that should be right. So that's that's nicely lined up now and all ready to go. Uh, except we need to add power to it. There we go. We're going to make sure that this is unloading. Truck comes down here, turns left goes underneath this, lava lava lava, goes forwards to here, turns this way, drives back this way. So yes, so this is our kind of courtyard area. So we'll just do this. Oops. 
Right. I'll tweak all of this and set it all up properly in a little while. But yeah, so we're going to come down here, turn this way, go underneath there. But all this room to then turn around and then drive off before going up there. And we will, just to ensure that that is adhered to, we will put some big heavy pillar bases in. So that now there is no argument <laughs> of the directions that are supposed to be travelled down here. There we go. Let's get us a truck. So we'll put that where we intend it to kind of go. Oh, it's not quite close enough, but... Oh, I haven't got any coal on me now. <laughs> oh, I've got some fuel. That fuel will do. Right. Okay. So let's line her up. So we're going to want this one to stop somewhere around about here, aren't we? Okay, so stop there. Now V, and then we want to start recording, and we go. That's some pretty timing, don't you think? <laughs> it does cut through the power line, but we won't we won't worry about that too much. And this is why you don't want the slopes too steep. <laughs> okay, as long as we keep fairly left here, we should be all right. Or all, all left. Yeah, it's going to take some time to drive up here. Actually, it's probably quicker to run. Oh, this is so painful. And we're up. Okay, so. We roll underneath. Stop. It gives us some stuff. We drive forward and we turn around in this area here. And then we turn down here. Now this should be a little bit quicker going downhill. Just a bit. And then my thought was that at the bottom here we actually come off this way so that it's plenty wide enough. Ah, this is probably going to be a problem because the tractor's probably going to be moving too fast to be able to make that turn. <laughs> but we'll find out. Okay, finish recording. So, let's see. Uh, I want to come in here. Ah, I wanted that. I want a bit of coal so just so that I can put it in there. And now I'm going to hide the nodes and set autopilot. Well, he seems to have the hang of it. <laughs> Off he goes. I'm going to hang around here for a minute because I want to see what happens when it gets to the bottom of this ramp. I have a feeling it's going to be going too fast to make the turn. So I might actually have to make it so that the direction is all the other way. So that it has a bigger turning point. And here it comes, here it comes. Oh, this is exciting, right? This is the cutting edge of pleasure. <laughs> yeah, I was right. Oh, mind you, though, look, he sorts himself out. Maybe we just keep it. It's funny, really, though, isn't it? it? Seems to do the job, look. There we go. 
Yeah, we've got loads of coal here now. Perfect. Okay. And he's off again. Good man. Cheers. Okay, so we are now ready to start building our factory for steel. Hmm. Just got to think what's going to be the best way to go about this whole area. And I think I'll just do it as a little courtyard. I might have windows on it, actually. Yeah, something like that. That's quite a cool little back depot area. I like it. And then I have all of this area for my main steel plant. But I've got to do some maths and some calculations. I've got to reroute this thing so it's coming up here. But basically I've got 120 of each type of resource. And if we check what we can actually do. So this is quite interesting because we've got uh, the standard recipe which is iron ore and coal. So three of each creates th three of them and it uses 45 per minute. So obviously the maths don't fully work out on that one because uh, 45 divided by the 120 that we're getting at the moment is 2.6 so that means I'd only be able to have 2.6 smelters running which is not so great but I do have this alternate recipe which needs 60 per minute but uses iron ingots and coal so I can create the 120 of these by having four smelters creating irons and then just chucking coal in as well but because that is using slightly less iron and using 60 per minute, we actually work out slightly better. So this is the way we're going to go for it. So we're going to set up four iron smelters and then two steel smelters and then send that up to the floor above to start making all the other stuff. Another long day of hard work. And we have the starts of a steel factory. Woohoo! Just as a quick update, I am going to temporarily siphon off the iron from this miner until I have enough to unlock explosives, at which point I will then open up this iron ore patch and this will be the one that feeds this factory. Come and take a look around. Come with me. So we have these cool looking stairs. I've done a little bit of the, uh, the pleasantries, but not too much. This is all still rough. So we go up through our main entrance here and we are presented with a factory let me just come over this way so what we have over here is eight smelters that will be doing the iron into iron ingots now that's obviously more than i can cope with at the moment but once i get the mark three belts that will be then absolutely fine we will then have all of the iron ingots coming out to these points here and I did this a little bit differently. I put these up on stilts and had them going in just to mix it up, make it look a little bit more interesting. But we have our coal coming in there and our ingots will come out here. And then they will come along to these here foundries, which we can't see. So let's go up this ramp here so that we can go and have a look. So similar principle. The coal and the iron ingots go into these foundries. I've set up this kind of alternating manifold system. I add these uh, stackable conveyor poles just to the underside of these. They don't function for any purpose other than to make it look like that's what this is standing on. But it isn't. <laughs> it doesn't need to be there. See? Like that one. I forgot to add it. But I like to add that just because it just makes it feel a little bit more like it's supposed to so that is all good and ready and then when these are producing the steel ingots we will have two lots of those coming up here which will go up belts in the way I like to do it up the front of the building and then onto the next floor which will be where we start creating steel beams and steel pipes I need to do some calculations to work out exactly how many of these I will have to how many I can actually start making and I will start doing that now and as if within the blink of an eye we now have a second floor with some steps let's head on upstairs and go and see what we've got so you go up through here it takes you outside into this little area where you can see the courtyard where the truck comes down and drives in and drops off our coal you go up here and then this is our second floor now obviously this is all still very much in progress but this is a very very simple setup that I've done up here I've actually not done anything based on calculations yet 
it is purely just so that it runs through the motions and does it. But we have six constructors on each side being fed from two belts of steel ingots from downstairs. This side is all doing steel pipes. And this side is all doing steel beams. They will all come down to these belts here, which will go off to this little area here. They then will get distributed to these storage bins here. There is a third one ready for the encased beans when I open it, and a fourth one for anything extra, just in case I want. And as you can see, it's quite a view down there. And there will be some way of collecting these and taking them over there at some point. Or there'll be a train station pickup here for when we start making the real big city base area. I still need to do all the walls and finish this off as an actual building, which I totally intend to do. But I wanted to see if it actually worked before we went too far. So the next thing to do will be just getting a feed of iron ore into my smelter system to start this off. And as I mentioned before, I'm just going to send some of that over here until this is available to me and then I'll get that in. But we need to find a way to get this ore over there in such a way that we can easily swap it out to the new miner when I open that up once this has been running for a bit. Ah, yes, like that. Perfect. Job's done. So my iron ore comes over here, across this belt, and then into the back of the factory there. And then when I can destroy this rock, I will be able to easily attach the belt to the existing belt. And to get it all working, I just need to connect this to this and then we can see it running. Let's give it a go. It is alive. And it is producing ingots and the coal is moving. That's nice, it's going all right so far. And our foundries are creating steel ingots. Nice, nice. They will be heading upstairs using the external lifts and going into my constructors. And there we go. Steel beams and steel pipes all being made in my little steel factory. All heading out nice and neatly towards my storage area. Which does look a bit crazy, but it's quite cool. I like it. Perfect. So we will now slowly get these bins filled up and then we can start unlocking some more of the milestones inside of the tiers. But I've got to admit, this does look so cool when you can start seeing everything moving around all nice and neatly and yeah. I'm pleased with this. Definitely got a little bit of cosmetic work to do and I must get round to unlocking the power poles for walls so that I don't have to have power lines all draped across every single view. So, it is time to unlock another milestone. Advanced steel production, which will give us our encased beans and our Mark II miners. Go. 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 And kaboosh! Milestone reached. Improved miner included to double extraction rates and improve efficiency of new pipelines. A collection of new, more complex parts is now available for crafting. An additional project part can now be constructed. Further progress to the next phase is now possible. Okay, that's odd. Why didn't our thing fly away? Normally he flies away. He didn't fly away. Did I miss something? It just did it. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. So production, we have the new miner Mark II. Okay. Simples. What do we got? Hyper tubes. Oh, we could... Oh, no, we can't do those yet because we need that. Logistics Mark III. We just need some more of these. Just need a little bit of time and then we can have Mark III's. Then we can go around and we can upgrade the lot to Mark II miners with Mark III belts. Woohoo! And now for the final milestone of the episode, Logistics Mark III. We can finally do it. So, kaboom, 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 and kaboosh. 
Milestone reached. Logistics can be improved with a larger storage container and enhanced conveyor belt efficiency. Ho 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 ho! So, now we have our Mark III conveyor belts that can transport up to 270 resources per minute, so this is going to make making stuff much quicker. Encased beams are a little bit awkward. I forgot to double check this, but an encased beam uses four steel beams and some concrete. Now the concrete's not a real problem because just down there is my original concrete factory, which I can actually now send up here. I just need to find a nice way to do it. They need to come straight up to this floor and I think I'll be using them over this side, but also I need to take a feed off of this to put back into some assemblers making the encased beams. Hmm. This might take a little more thinking than I was first thinking. First thinking. Right, I think for now, I'm just going to make it very, very simple. We will have two of these assemblers just placed like that. And these are going to be making our encased industrial beams. These will be fed in a similar kind of way as downstairs. But I need to look at this uh, and think. So one's going to come from over there. I need to get that cement up here. I actually, ah, I need the actual cement that's been processed in here. Yeah, so, oh, this is going to take me a little bit more thinking. So that means I need something that is generating 30 cement per minute. So six, I need 60 cement per minute. So that's two machines running at 45 out of one of them. Ah, go, 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 go. So I need two machines making concrete for me as well. I have a plan. I'm going to bring the limestone in over here into two constructors that's then going to send concrete all the way along this wall down to the other side which it can then be used for these guys here. And I just need to take a feed out of this at the end to come back into here. Yes. No problem. No problem. We can do this. It's all fine. So while it might not look entirely expandable it is they're my two set up for now i can possibly go that way and i can also add one more going this way if i increase production over here which i will do once i implement all my brand new mark three belts i've just now got the big old task of sorting out all that cement and getting it into this system here yeah no problem and there we go it's now running. We have a nice steady flow of concrete coming from over there. You can't quite see, but I'll take you over in a second. And we have our flow of steel beams coming in from there, which we will speed up shortly. But for now, it, it is turning over, which is the important bit. And let's head over here and see where these are all coming from. So this is the new part of the building <laughs> that I have just built. And we'll go up the ramps here into the new little room, which is purely for making concrete. I ended up going with three. So these three will generate more than enough concrete that we need. It's coming from down there and we will speed this up with a Mark II Miner soon. But even like this, it's still running absolutely fine. And then when our encased beams come through, they will work their way up and out of the factory, across this belt here and then back in the factory and run down this belt and join the others that are going off into my temporary stores down there ready for me to organize some form of collection and that's another point i need to upgrade these bins look because i've already hit the max of these steel pipes nice doing really really well and i think that will just about do us for today as the sun sets over our new steel factory well actually the sun doesn't ever sets here because i have the permaday mod that keeps it daytime all the time but imagine if the sun was setting over our brand new steel factory complete with coal drop-off depot that needs a bit of tweaking but it's all right really it does the job the coal gets dropped off and it is powering the factory nicely there are a few tweaks that i will make probably off camera these bins need to all be upgraded to take a bit more all of the belts are going to need to be upgraded to mark three which just so happen to use these here steel plates, which as they're being made so slowly means it will take a while for me to get enough. So it's a bit of a vicious circle, but no worries, we'll get there. Also at some point I must spend some time on the aesthetics of the building, 
There's a huge hole in the side at the moment. And it needs a little bit more interesting shapes added to it. But it's definitely going to look great when you stand in the main base and look up at it. I'm going to call it a day for now and I really hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please remember hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button and remember hit that little bell so that you get notified. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!